Yeah, no problem. It is six o'clock, and we will start our personnel and finance uh, meeting, and uh, we will introduce ourselves. So, if anybody's watching, I'm Mary Cope, and I'm council chair, or I'm chair of this committee, <laughs> council man. I'm Gabe Johnson, Brainerd City Council. Pat Wessel, Brainerd City Administrator. Let's just go around. Mike, Mike Higgins, Brainerd Industrial Center. Chris Robinson, Brainerd Lakes Area Economic Development. Corky McWilson, Brainerd Police Department. Philip Hogan, uh, City Planner Intern. There we go. Mark Oscar, Brainerd City uh, Planning Department. And welcome to everyone. We'll begin with approval of bills, transfer of funds, and payments to contractors. And um, the, is, are there any questions? Any comments? Do we have a motion? I move to approve. Is there a sec I'll second? It. <laughs> <laughs> any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. And I I don't know if I told you, Dave is out of town? Yeah, Dave is at a national debate uh, with his team. So, okay. no, we okay. understand. Now that we've got all the business now, we can adjourn. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he's, go he's going to make Brainerd proud with that debate team. There's no question about that. Okay, item two is the city administrator update, and who has that? I can handle that. Yeah, great. Yeah, so I've been working with Sharon. And she's been talking to Mr. Thoreen, and Sue and I met to put together a plan of what we've been hearing from our council members and what we, how we think we should go forward with a contract. Hopefully tonight we can offer him an official contract. I don't know if the attorney is working on drafting it up yet. Would be the way it was worded to us is that the council was going to approve the proposal. The city attorney would then draft it up tomorrow, and then um, Sharon would share it with the... With the Applicant and then City Council would actually be also tonight setting a special meeting to meet. Okay, so that that sounds right. So what we've got here, and what I think, what I'm, I'm comfortable recommending, is to uh, extend a job offer to Mr. Thurin at Step C on the salary administration plan without longevity. Uh, three weeks starting vacation. He had asked for four, hadn't he? Well, I don't know about that. No, he had asked for what well, he told Sharon he would like three. Okay. And we, we originally went in with one. Okay. Is what we told her to try and get. Okay. So Sue and I set the groundwork of what she should try to push him towards. And, right. And she, this is what she's heard back, and I'm comfortable with everything he wants, so that's... Three weeks vacation. Three weeks vacation at when he starts. He is planning a vacation in March of next year. Sick leave, he has requested 160 hours starting balance just in case. He is interested in, um, he has a willingness to change our salary administration plan to get rid of sick time and just have a PTO system instead of vacation and sick time. So he, he, would, he is willing to look into that. Like I said, with longevity, he doesn't even he doesn't believe in it, so he, that won't be a problem. Not offering him longevity, medical insurance, he would he's indicated he would opt out. So he would uh, he would qualify for the opt out provision in our salary administration plan, but it would be at a cost savings of ten to fifteen thousand dollars for the city that way. Para, he currently receives a pension, so there's another cost savings to the city where we wouldn't have to pay the 7.5% para contribution for him. He is looking up for a one-time reimbursement of $3,000 for expenses to relocate. I think we should offer that to him with the caveat that if he leaves, if he voluntarily leaves in the next two years, that he be repaid to the city. And his tentative start date would be August 3rd, because he's indicated his county board would accept his resignation as early as tomorrow. And he'd like a, a three-month severance, not moving up at all. Seems like it would be agreeable to him. And so those, everything I just mentioned, would be the motion to extend that contract to Mr. Thurain. 
direct the attorney to draft up the contract. Well, it sounds to me like uh, you and Sue did a great job. And I'm believing that he was reasonable to work with from the sound of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking this is a, a good step for us. And so your motion is that we uh, accept and recommend this proposed package yep. to offer to Mr. Thurry. That's it. Right. Uh, go ahead, Patrick. If I can just clarify, but you did have the caveat that if he leaves, he used to repay I, it within two years. No, I did want to add the uh, request that no, he number repay. eight the relocation. Right. Piece. On relocation. Otherwise, everything else that Sharon laid out here that it looks to be agreeable to both sides, I think we should go with. Yeah. In the summary on that last page, page two, it does talk about how the city council, if they find this acceptable, that's where the next step would be to ask the city attorney to draft the employment agreement, uh, that incorporates a team, or the term set in the special, and then set a special meeting for council considering. And I'm thinking, I know you got mad at me when I said Wednesday, because that was chicken dance. No, uh, uh, oh, you mean this week? This Wednesday, oh. yeah. But I don't know, I, I'm assuming just minutes to I meet to approve. the chicken dance. I know. Um, but then, so well, you, if we post, could we meet at the chicken? Actually, you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when you're at a regular meeting, you can adjourn to any time the next day, whenever you'd like. So you have. Oh, maybe we could do it Thursday. Like you sure could. No, that Thursday. Most even the people who have like Kelly. Dave's out of town, so that's well, he, he, sure he gone all week, do you think? Yes. Okay. Not at the planning commission. Wednesday for sure. He won't be in town. But Thursday noon, maybe Kelly could get there at noon. Uh, Thursday was, afternoon and evening, yep. we got big stuff out of the I paper mill. Yeah, I thought those guys were doing at noon or something. But. No, well, not really. But um, so yeah, Thursday is a good time, a good day if you wanted to do it Thursday um, during the like, that so that time. You could even do it at eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, I don't before. God, oh, I know that. that's right. You don't like mornings. So. Yeah, my schedule's flexible. And I, then I could make it pretty just because. You're going to have these to hand out tonight. Then the last thing, uh, the last page has a good summary of all the different options. Right. The clarification of the weeks of vacation, mm -hmm. the bank, and the sick leave, health insurance, and so. Gabe, would you uh, want to give that report? Yeah, I can okay. explain that. And I will. Uh, Maybe uh, better. Okay. And um, do you want to move we accept it as a committee and? So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extra copies well, it sounds to me like you really did a good job, and I appreciate that because this has kind of been hanging over us, and we're all anxious to see it move. So, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, police department overtime, and this is Corky, and I believe this is for informational. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Um, okay. Take the away. city administrator brought to my attention that some council members had some questions regarding police department overtime. He suggested that we provide you with a bunch of our payroll cover memos um, just to give you a history of what the overtime uh, purposes have been and where the spending's been at. And I guess just to make the most effective use of the time here, I'll just start out to see if you have any specific questions and hopefully that can direct our conversation. It seems as if it is a lot clunky. And I think we all understand that if there's a court case and the officer sure. who was involved in the situation is called to court and that's overtime, that they have to go. I mean, that's not the, any argument that I've ever heard. Okay. But um, are there, you know, I think it is true that at one time the argument was made to the council about adding people and that would cut down on overtime and it seems like overtime just escalates. Yeah. And then the airport issue, of course, uh, I don't, that, have we heard anything from the county on that one? We are, I told Tim Mahool about two weeks ago that we were, we were, we have a general number right now, but we're, we feel the number is really high. And so we're asking to review it and he's aware of the situation. So okay. That, but uh, what, what county did is had each of the staff go through um, their issues and track all the time that they did spend over a month and it was much higher than we thought it was. Mm -hmm. um, so that raises concerns we want to check the validity of that. Then. We need to move on that as soon as we can because that would help. Okay, uh, those were concerns okay. I've heard raised and have myself had some sure. of those concerns. I don't know about you. Guys. Yeah, and I've heard the same concerns that, or, or that uh, over time hasn't appeared to have gone down. But I know, and you mentioned that when we were extending the, off, the uh, job offers to the new officers that there will be a training time so you can't just Eliminate, right? But uh, a question I, you know, just a couple basic questions. Is your goal 
every period to have zero over time, and this is just the nature of what happens here. Keep in mind that a lot of this is reimbursable. So whenever you see things like um, TZD enforcement grant, airport security, um, there's some other things, a bomb squad, a lot of that's reimbursable over time. Um, there's functions that we contract out, whether it's a JC's event or mm -hmm. something. So it might say special events. Um, so we get reimbursed for quite a bit of that. Um, the challenge is with a lot of this is you're never going to get to a zero. And the reason I say that is a lot of times we can't control when incidents occur. Mm -hmm. And when we have to arrest people and we have to take them to jail, and the officers that get involved in that can't necessarily hand that off to the next people that are on the next shift. It, they have all the information. They have to process that part of it. So they have to take the people to jail. Um, you mentioned the court. That's almost always unfortunately happens when the officers aren't scheduled. And some of this too is dictated by the contracts that say when they get overtime and when they don't. Um, Follow-up investigations, minimum deployment is probably the one that you see the most common. This started with the prior police chief and I've kind of carried it through. We've recognized that for the most part we want to have a minimum operating level of number of officers and we pick peak days of the week, Wednesday through Saturday, and pick peak hours that we say we don't want our staffing levels to get below this because it's not safe for the officers and it's not effective for the community. So what happens then is you start to factor in um, other things that we can't control, like uh, injured on duty things, um, workman comp, things like that, um, military leave. There's all these things that come into play with our schedule and then keep in mind we're trying to maintain you know, a 24-7, 365 operation there. So a lot of things come up that are kind of out of our control that start to affect minimum deployment. Um, we, people, we ask them to put in for their vacations at the beginning of the year. So we'll approve somebody's vacation and then someone will come along with an FMLA request or something else kind of outside of our control, hence that affects our minimum deployment. So we usually try and cover those and our minimum deployment by no means is excessive. We still frequently rely on the Sheriff's Department and the Baxter Police Department to help us when our staffing levels are somewhat short, to help us respond to emergencies and get us by until we can uh, get the right personnel working on things. Do you? Uh you say you have reimbursement for some things. Sure. For example, Brainerd High School security, is that reimbursed? That is. A hundred percent, even overtime. Yes. That's so. Right. Like, take for instance high school graduation. Right. We bill the school back for that overtime. Okay. How about uh, community events? You identified a few as you go through this. Some of those, no, because of the nature of the community event, we make a commitment to the organization because they're members of the community. Right. Um, some are and some aren't. I'd say it, I'd have to look back at each individual community event and see what it is. Um, if it's something like uh, downtown street fest, thirteen hours. That's billable. The and JCs yeah, pay us yeah, back for we, that. We pay um, like thirteen hundred. When they so. have like ultimate fighting at the civic center, they pay us back for that okay. community event. Okay. So ones that we there is a billable thing we can bill okay. for. Okay. How about some of the other Fourth uh, of July events? No, Fourth of July is probably the most expensive day yeah. for the police department in the city. That's the day where we only allow like two to three people to take the day off. Otherwise, we do schedule almost all the staff, including myself and the deputy chief, to work. Um, and that's just math. The number of people that are in the city at that time, our staffing levels, we can't let get below what it is. I, I think we've had pretty safe and successful Fourth of July, yeah, so I really have. hate to we see have. us uh, okay. do anything I just wondered if do. there could be any sort of discussion with community action on some reimbursement. Because I know you're really spread thin that day and way into the night. You know, because people are out there yeah. celebrating sometimes. Yeah, you're right. And we always have concerns. Like this year, the 4th is on a Saturday. Yeah. We expect to be busy. Well, what would your feeling be if we tried some negotiation with them? I'm just asking. I don't know where they get the money from. Well, they get um, they the from the city. Yeah, um, they have to come back. Right. Well, or live within their budget. And that's an event that occurs within our city, so we're somewhat responsible for if we were to understaff it and something bad to happen. And even without that event, 4th of July is just a busy day. It is. So I imagine you'd... It's probably our busiest day of the year every yeah. year. A hearing test here on one of them that's... A yeah, you know what What's happens that? there is that's mandated as part of our um, hearing conservation and the hearing loss prevention program. So what happens is you have officers that work the night shift, but the hearing test person is only here for a certain sure. period of the day, so we have to pay them to come in to complete this required hearing test. Okay. 
Could you, um, when you, when you provide the overtime report, could you have an um, an added column where you'd identify the reimbursement for any any of the events that are reimbursed? He, right now he They're puts them in bold. I mean that's for, for TDZ and TZ. Yeah, but I'm not, not all of them. Like we didn't when he was at UPS yeah. this year. That wasn't folded, but that was. But that and that was all over time. Right? Uh -huh. And high high um, high school security isn't. He, nope, and that you're right. That should be. And um, uh, we there can change are that. Other right. community events, 11 hours here, February March period. I saw 11 hours. Uh, it would be helpful, I think, if the council saw. What could be re or what is reimbursed and at how much? Okay. It might make the pain a little less, maybe. And when you sit down and do your annual budget, do you pretty much know expect that you're going to have eighty? We do. And I base that on court things that we can't control. Mm -hmm. um, we know that just based upon past experience that we're probably going to have minimum deployment things. I mean, you look at we're in a situation again where we thought that we would have. 24 officers fully trained almost by this point of the year. Um, one of the officers that we hired at the first of the year resigned partway through training. The other officer unfortunately nearly broke her thumb, mm -hmm. so she's behind in training. So once again we hit summer where we've granted people time off and vacations and we're short staffed at this point. Now we've got to go back to the hiring process and get someone. Um, but we do, and you know, the one thing I think really and I know you're probably not going to like to hear this, but sometimes we need to be thankful that our overtime is what it is, that we haven't had any serious or horrific events. I mean, if you look back to the homicide we had at the first of the year, I can't think of a homicide that we worked where we had such little overtime because we were able to apprehend the two people quickly. Um, if we had a long, drawn-out homicide where we didn't have good leads on the suspects, where we had to travel around to follow up on it, we could have some more expensive things. So I think that's something to keep in mind is we've been fortunate in some senses as far as overtime that we have incurred that it could be worse. And I'm not saying that to make you think that it's going to be. I just sometimes I'm thankful that we don't because I'll be honest with you too, it's not always easy to get the staff to work all this overtime. When we were short staffed and we were down to 20 officers or less, um, and we had some minimum deployment things. It's not always so easy. These guys already work long shifts, um, and to ask them to extend or come in on their days off, um, it, it takes some convincing sometimes. And I, frankly, I don't blame them. I mean, if they put their 80 hours in sometimes and they've had their fill of this job, and to ask them to come back and work additionally and still keep a professional level about themselves is um, not an easy task sometimes. So overtime would uh, be different from officer to officer depending on their pay scale? Yes, that's the correct. The amount yep. would be different. Right. Okay. And it, what's the average overtime cost? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Can't you can't hourly rate, I don't know. Salary. Yeah. So whatever the okay. base hourly rate is, okay. like you said, one and a half times. I couldn't tell you the number, though. Okay. okay. Um, are we over our overtime budget already? Do we are high just because of the, I think it was 200 hours that we put in at the UPS. So, but again, that was reimbursed, so it's going to look our high. Our miscellaneous revenue is high then. Yes. Okay. So if you track to where we are in the year, and Connie and I can debate this a little bit, but I don't think we're over where we are for this no, period no, of the time no. of the year. No. Keep in mind, we've got some expensive days coming up, the yeah. 4th of July, yeah. um, that. So, but it seems to hopefully stay in check. I mean, there's always going to be some unforeseen things that we can't control, and they unfortunately cost us money. I saw last year 106 0.50 hours of on the 4th of, of July yeah that's got to be what in the thousands of dollars that's a lot of money yeah, it is but I, oh I, I understand you have yeah. to do it I'm just right. wondering if we can think of some ways to get some reimbursement on some of that that would be within the budget process when yeah um, exactly. we'll work through that process and suggest to uh, community action, they start pointing out for the, that expense. Yeah, they say July 4th festivities were eight hours. Which one? Eight hours? I'm looking at July 4th over time. For um, what year? Last year. 4th of July festivities was eight hours. Oh, then below it though, then it says, uh, yeah, that's not double time. That's, 
events related to the Fourth of July. So if they had a battle of the bands or something that year that they required, the just one line below that was the, the staff that worked overtime that we double, double time. Oh, right. Okay, I see. Okay, so that wasn't <laughs> because it's a holiday. If they work a holiday, we have to pay them extra because mm -hmm. of that. So. Well, I think we appreciate the good job that you and the officers all do, Chief. I, I, this isn't. Don't look upon this as criticizing, sure. Please, but. We, we have an obligation to try to understand and do the best we can financially for our citizens, too. So I think uh, it's good to keep it in mind, and I, I'm sure you keep it in mind. Well, I hope you don't think I'm frivolous with this or don't scrutinize it, because I do. Yeah. And My hope is to actually keep a recording of this and then for every new council member, I, play this or play it once yeah. a year to council members to remind them. Sure. Because sure. It's, it, it constantly comes up, and it's right. a good question. Right. It's just that we, you forget, because... Right. We work with Corky on a daily basis, and right. he gives us updates, and there's a drug investigation going on. It's going to take more time. And I think if there are things or ideas you have that we might be able to recoup losses or whatever, I would hope you'd come to the council. With sure. This, because you would be the person who would know that better than anybody. Yeah. Keep, keep in mind on that drug investigation one, most of that's reimbursable. We, with the Sheriff's Department and the Baxter Police Department, um, get some funding from a grant. So some of that to a certain point, but that's not a bottomless pot either. That runs out some years. Yeah. So. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, why do we get these memos? Just for informing new historic how Corky's found that the city council wants to be updated on uh, what's going on and, uh, as far as the overtime and to be aware of what the overtime's at. And this because is we in, don't hear from we hear from the fire chief, right. but we don't hear any other department. Like the street department when there's snow plowing and it snowed on a Saturday Sunday, you know there was overtime, but uh, it's not as heavily scrutinized. Anything further you'd like to Nothing I can tell us about. or talk about? No, nope. if a question mm -hmm. should come up down the road that you didn't right. think of now, please go. Right. Well, I think we appreciate the time. And again, I, I have no doubt that every one of us appreciates the work you do. Yeah, I just saw some of you guys outside my house last night. Yeah. That's what they said. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's, okay. it's a good feeling when you see the police car going okay. by and you just feel yes. safer about it. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And this is information only, right? This yes. is my understanding. Of this fire, uh, fire department, fire chief hiring. Is uh, anybody special taking mm -hmm. that? I'm sure. Here's a special nothing. person taking that. Right. Okay. Uh, our Civil Service Commission met recently and they have certified the results of our fire chief hiring process. There were uh, six people interviewed. They have certified the top three as required by their fire civil service rules. And with that, you will also see that the interview panel that met has recommended that the council only authorize or off, um, extend a job offer to our top candidate. And he was quite a bit top in the scores. I know yeah, they look close. I'd yeah. move to extend the job offer to Timothy Holmes. And I second the motion. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Um, and let's see now. He begins at step A of the salary, which is 85%. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And thank you. And when is Mr. Holmes going to be ready to start? It's going to take a little bit. We have we to don't do know some, yet? Well, he has to do pre-employment testing. So he has to do a psych evaluation. He has to do his physical and background check and also a driver's license check. So at the council meeting, we should probably... It's a conditional job offer. It's a conditional job offer. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what it actually says. Yeah, that, yeah that's what it says in here, mm -hmm. too. Recommended action. Yeah. So if all of those things pan out perfectly, mm -hmm. will it be a month or less? Then he needs to give two weeks notice to his employer. Okay. And then at that point... Okay. And is the uh, person who's uh, acting as the current fire chief, is he willing to stay during that time or to continue his work? Chief Will Miller is willing to stay on. Okay. Until, until we get the new one in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, Mr. Holmes has quite a bit of experience, I understand. So, should be a good fit for the city. So, yes. Okay, and uh, did you make that motion? Yeah, did we, we vote? We voted. All right. <laughs> Thank you. We can move on then to uh, the procurement policy. Actually, leave of absence return. Oh, I'm sorry. There is Item a 4B. 
Yeah, you're right. There is a leave of absence. Correct? We have a paid on call um, firefighter. His name is Clinton Langwood, who had requested a leave of absence last year around August. And he went to go back to school to be a paramedic. Mm -hmm. He has now completed the classroom portion of that training, and he's just doing the ride along. So he is asked to come back to work because he is available. And he's paid on call? He is a paid on call. Yes. I have motion to approve. Second, all in discussion, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried, very good. Procurement policy, and that's back on the agenda. We saw it once before, we asked to hold it. Um, and uh, the first page, attachment A, is what we have now. <laughs> and uh, attachment B is what is being proposed. And I personally still have some concerns about the lack of oversight or even information. If I had some assurance that there would at least be a memo to the council uh, under any of them that don't require council action, I would feel much better about it. But there are some pretty big figures in there that don't require uh, council action. And, and that kind of, um, it frightens me just a little bit. And I guess what, um, just to kind of give you an idea how this was developed was is that I went out to um, Crow and County and a couple other cities and copied their procurement policy and this is pretty much their policy. Um, and then added the stuff about the, um, on page four for federal services just because that's kind of what drove this whole right. policy to be made. Um, and then I did have the city attorney just review it quickly as well as the auditors just to make sure that we had everything included in there and they were both okay with it. But this is the council's policy and it was just a draft to get you guys thinking about it so any changes can be made that you see fit and they could be made anytime I absolutely oh, it's a policy so you can yeah, modify I'm, it anytime. I'm presuming. but to say the city attorney reviewed it thoroughly not right. just quickly right um, right but uh, as I had several comments as i understand a uh, hundred thousand dollars and up uh, the city council approval is required and that's, it says city council approval is required for public uh, advertisement for the receipt of seal goods. Final bid award will be made by the city council and the contract will be approved. But it sounded like 25000 to to 100000 uh, There was a lot of uh, flexibility there within the departments. Am I misreading that or am I missing something or, or what? Or is that what it says? So you're on page two, the spot that I talks am. about $25,000 yes. to $100,000. You know, that's a lot of money, even that. So if it's like those kind of things, if they're approved in the budget, once the council of already gave us authorization to, to, I mean, if it's outside the budget, I think we're always coming to council. Right. And so when I'm looking at this, if we're doing the budget and we authorize Corky to purchase, you know, $100,000 to purchase two squad cars, can he just follow this policy or does he need to come back to council and get approval right. of the squad car purchase? That's what I was thinking right. more so. Right. The only but. concern I have about that is uh, that I like it when the department heads wait until we're uh, at least into the year, half if possible, to buy things because you know that the beginning months we're down about as low as we're going to get on the money we have. And so I always think it's a really good thing if they wait for their big purchases until we're well into the year, maybe even the middle of the year. And with this, if it's in the budget, they could buy it in January. Now, I'm not saying they would, I'm just saying I'm concerned about that. But you gotta give them some credit. Well, Staff is fully really aware of that, those type of situations. Some of the, the, the bigger things are that we at least have to have the order purchased because when they're on state bid, um, if you try to buy a squad car at the end of May, um, you probably won't get one because they've already been all spoken for. There's a certain okay. number. And that goes the same with a lot of the other equipment. Well, actually, I think the city council, the city ran into this a couple of years ago when we bought that park truck. Um, and we were buying it at the end of the season and we had to get an older, or yeah, an older one rather than a newer one. I can't remember the details, but it has happened to us. And so staff is, as yourself, Mary, very concerned about making sure we don't spend the dollars early in case there is something that comes up that uh, was unexpected. I didn't see in here, and it may be that I missed it, but I didn't see in here any statement that said that the, um, these purchases must be in the budget, must have been identified in the an approved budget. You know what, I do believe you're correct, um, and I would just say that if it isn't in the budget that they have to get council approval. But I think that should, if yeah. we are...
Uh, if we're going to consider uh, recommending this, yeah, I think it should be with the statement that we will add to this that the item must be in the approved city budget. Yeah, I would put that just in, in order to follow this policy. Exactly. I put that, 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 that in the heading in part two where it says authority for right, approved products right. and services is granted to each right. department head and is her official designation. I must be in the approved annual budget or something to that mm -hmm. effect. And if it's not, then you have to go get city council. Absolutely. That, that would be my thinking because yeah. that does mean that in the event that we had uh, somebody just get really excited about something and want to go out and buy it, that, you know, if it's not in the budget, you at least come and get the approval. Yeah, it's better to have it in black and white and assume that everybody will follow that. That saves a lot of grief on everybody's part. So with that, what is your thought, Dave? I would uh, move to approve this with that change. Is there, I will second that discussion. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Thank you, I hope that works well. I know you'll be watching it like a walk. <laughs> so I think it'll be okay, thank you. Uh, next is item six, loan subordination, and who wants to talk about that? I will talk about that. Okay. So we have a resident who had a uh, SCDBG loan um, through the city, and they are wishing to refinance their house. And in order to do so, the city needs to sign a subordinate agreement saying that they agree to stay in second place of the mortgage. And that, what does that stand for? I should know. SC uh, small Community Development Grant. So nothing has really changed no. except uh, you continue the process. I move to approve. I second it. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. I oppose, motion carried. And item uh, uh, seven, resolution relating to the reimbursement of the airport infrastructure improvements. So this resolution is just kind of a um, a caution that if we ever issue debt associated with the airport um, extension project that we can reimburse ourselves for the cost that we're incurring now with the bond proceeds before we get the proceeds. It's just a standard, we pass this resolution when we do any of our construction projects as well. So it's just a, a precautionary measure to pass the resolution. It does not mean that we're going to issue debt, it's not committing the city to issue the debt, it's just saying if we do, we can use the bond proceeds to reimburse for costs we're incurring now. Is there any possible negative repercussion for passing this? No. Nope. You'll probably see a lot more of these. It's my recommendation that we have more of these rather than less because if you try doing it after the fact, if well, let's say we did a whole bunch of survey work, and uh, that would be deemed outside of it, so we could not bill that back then if that's what we ultimately decided. Is there a, a listing or a roster or whatever of the kinds of costs that we could reimburse? I mean, I'm assuming oh, sure. you couldn't take the bond and just reimburse Connie's salary or something. Portions of it could be really good for the time she's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does she work specifically okay. on that project? Or anybody, any staff that does, uh, okay. including engineering, tax, uh, never plan. And that's that. laid out in it, is that right? Um, that's it's part of the bond language. proceeds. Okay. It's, a rec it's actually recommended by our legal counsel, okay. or bond counsel, in this case, Martha Ingram. Okay, well, it makes sense. I just want to know what, nope. what we're Great doing. Great question. Uh, what is your thought I on that? I move to approve the resolution. I will second that. Is there any discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Working right along here. Uh, item eight, capital improvement plan. Paul Steinman, do you want to step right up here and uh, take the chair and sure uh, be prepared for a beating or a smile <laughs> or whatever, whatever it is latter. tonight, whatever. Hopefully so. the latter. Okay. Uh, so I haven't been at one of these P and F committee meetings before. Do you want me to just walk you through what? Yes, the, please. What, yeah. Okay. So this evening, a uh, public hearing is required on your capital improvement plan for a project that you actually constructed 15 years ago. So as crazy as that sounds, it's necessary uh, based upon the recommendation of your bond counsel, Martha Ingram, in order to uh, refund those EDA lease revenue bonds that are associated with uh, uh, the public works garage, I believe. So you're required to hold a public hearing, putting that in your capital improvement plan and indicating in the public hearing notice that, and in the plan, that your intent is to, to 
sell bonds, in this case, refund bonds associated with that capital improvement. Okay, now we have some recommended actions here, so I'm going to run through them and you tell me if uh, those are the appropriate things. Uh, resolution adopting the CIP plan. And the explanation that we should make for the public is that this is an old CIP plan. It's a new plan, but the only item in it is to re use the bond money to, to refund those old issues. We're saving money. By right. Refunding. It's a new plan. The only amendment to it is doing this. Okay. Yeah. So it isn't like we're putting out a new plan and uh, we're going to build a new city hall. And, because okay. it's a CIP uh, bond, it must be in the CIP plan. Right. You are allowed to amend your plan to accommodate that being the plan was 2013. Right. We amended the plan. Okay, and then the uh, resolution authorizing issuance and sale of GEO improvement and CIP plan bonds, series 2015B. Right, okay. so right, so series 2015B is this capital improvement plan refunding. Okay. And your uh, new money, $245,000 uh, of new money for the projects that you're completing this year. So they're combined into one series of bonds. Okay, so the new money is 245000 That would be right. our street project. That's for the street project, right. correct. Yep. Okay, and then the third thing on here is the resolution authorizing issuance and sale of geo improvement and utility <coughs> revenue refunding bond series 2015 C. And 2015 C is a refunding. Again, both of these refundings are strictly and only for the purpose of um, achieving a savings level. Mm -hmm. This refunding is a refunding of your 2007 B bonds, which is a uh, mixture of uh, seven year and 10 year improvement portions, and a sewer portion and uh, a storm sewer portion as sanitary. Portion. So those, again, that refunding is being proposed for savings. And, and again, just so that we can refresh everyone's memory, including our own, what is the anticipated savings going to be? At last uh, run, which was uh, June 8, the savings uh, were about $65,000. And that's after we paid the issuance fees. And Correct. So there ought to be a net savings over the time. The net savings is $65,000, okay. yes. Additionally, uh, additionally, in a different market, we would combine these issuances together so that you'd only have a 2015B. It would be both refundings and the new money. In this case, though, this 707B, because it's an advanced refund, it has to meet a statutory 3%. Okay. savings test. Okay. We're concerned that it won't, it may not make the test on sale day. If it's combined with your other two issuances, it will all go away. Okay. So the other refunding may have savings that day and good savings. Um, it would have to go away. It, this this would drag all of those down with it. So what are we separate. paying currently on those bonds? What is our interest rate right now on those bonds? Because interest rates are coming up. I'm wondering if they we are. refund if we're going to actually save any money. Well, the, again, the projected savings on the 07B is 65000 And on the, on the 07, or the 02, let me get that projected savings for you. That projected savings as of 610 is 58000 net of all costs. So still pretty good savings. Um, and we aren't, we aren't concerned with this one. Uh, the, the, the one that you have combined with your new money doesn't have to meet the statutory requirement, but it might not have a savings level on, on sale day that you are in agreement with. So you, and in that case, um, it will go away along with your new money. What would and happen so, if we didn't get a better interest rate? <laughs> yeah, then, then can you, we withdraw it? Then? You can. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. yes. The savings levels have to meet um, meet your standard. Uh, Connie and I discussed that the the two hundred forty five thousand dollars of new money that you're borrowing for this year's street project, you have a reimbursement resolution already in existence for that. So, if it 
goes away along with the refunding because it doesn't meet your savings level, you'll have the ability to reimburse yourself next time you do a financing project, whether that's the airport or next uh, project next year. Okay, and then the other thing I didn't identify in reading through what the recommended action is we also need to call for a public hearing? The, we call for the public hearing upstairs. So all I know, I know, but yep. do we have to do that? Our committee should do that. I think it's part of the agenda is to call for. The oh, is it on here at this meeting? No. Oh. The public hearing will be at the full council at meeting, full and it council. is. It does say right there that we have to have a public hearing is the very first thing on the list, yes. and then you pass okay. the resolutions. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So all that we're asking for at the committee level is that you um, make the recommendation to adopt or not right. adopt the resolutions. Okay. So, what is your thought, Gabe? Do you have some questions? No, my only question is why can't we issue one bond that that is covered? Yeah. So it looks good to me. <clears throat> you want three separate motions, or you want to do all three of these in one? Well, I wonder if we could do them all in one. In other words, identify each of these uh, things here under the recommended action, yep. and do them all. Do you? See any reason that we can't? I just think when we're at council, we'll want them to each be separate. But you guys can do it down here at committee. Okay. I okay. Think we'll do it all as one now. You break it down. All right. Okay. And so, is that your motion? Yeah, I moved to adopt a resolution adopting the CIP plan and a resolution authorizing issuance of 2015B and and authorize a resolution authorizing issuance of 2015C. Okay, and I second that. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Will you be up there, Mr. Simon? Sure will. So you may uh, have to uh, discuss it a little bit to clarify. Sure. I'll come up again before the CIP public hearing and, sure. and make a brief. Okay, sounds yep. good. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. And the next item on our agenda is the Royal Tire Tax Increment Financing Plan. And I understand you're going to help us with that, as well as, uh, is it you, Mr. Robinson? How about Sheila? I'll just sit on the side. Okay, <laughs> we'll let them do the work tonight. She's okay. just here to make us look good. Sounds, <laughs> sounds good to me. Okay. So, um, who wants to begin that one? Well, I'll just begin and uh, <clears throat> remind you that uh, the Royal Tire Project was a, a project that came before the council originally for conceptual approval back on May 4th. And at that time, we uh, laid a, gave a presentation along with the, um, uh, the developer that the uh, Royal Tire and its affiliated um, development entity were proposing to redevelop the current site of the Royal Tire store. <coughs> would include demolition of the existing building, removal of existing parking lots, and another infrastructure, and then construction of the new retail tire and automotive service store. Um, at that time, it was clear to the, the Royal Tire folks that they would need some financial assistance um, in order to make it a feasible project. And they had come to the city requesting um, tax increment financing help. Um, you'll remember that we, we advised the council at that time, and I think there was a clear consensus that this project would be a catalyst for continued development along Washington Street, and um, we anticipated that we would find that the building would fit the definition of a blighted structure, um, that we would create some additional jobs and <coughs> looking to increase tax base in the city. Um, and we received direction to go ahead. It was conceptual, conceptual approval for that, and so we've been working diligently um, in a very uh, collapsed time frame to get this done take advantage of construction season. Um, you'll see there's a number of action items to take, and I'll let Mr. Steinman cover that. Um, but just uh, a, a couple of things that ch have changed since we came forward initially. Um, you might remember that we initially presented to you that the, the property had a market value of $427,000. That was based on taxes payable this year. Subsequent to that, 
presentation learned that the assessed market value is actually decreasing yet again next year. Uh, it was going to it was headed down to three hundred sixty six thousand dollars. So, you know, again, we're grateful to the property owners and the and the developer that they're willing and able to invest in this property. Um, so it will be a nice change and uh, and bring something of real value to that corner. Um, you might also remember that the, the original request for assistance was for $200,000 in present value. That's what they anticipated they would need to make this feasible project. As we got, got into the project and, and engaged the assessor's office to help us determine what would be the, the anticipated market value after the project was completed, um, and also looking at the, the expenses that were going to be incurred what, what were eligible expenses. Um, the folks at Springstead determined, you know, financial consultants and the attorneys determined that it looks like that most we can offer in present value $171,000. Um, we've consulted with the, the folks at Royal Tire and um, if the city is, is willing to extend that amount of assistance, um, they're willing to proceed with the project. Um, again, it's slightly less than they requested, um, but they're excited about the project as are we. Um, but it's going to require that we we look at a term of 25 years. <laughs> and that is really a long time. I think originally it was what 15. I think well, we were we were yeah. anticipating 20 when we initially presented it, and that in part was. Um, our estimation that the building value would come in at or close to their investment mm -hmm. amount of a million dollars plus. Um, the assessor, in looking at what other sales have been, concluded that um, that likely value when it's first assessed would be uh, closer to $600,000. Um, so we have, we have developers that are making a very <coughs> substantial financial commitment in order to completely redevelop a site. And, um, um, but unfortunately, it, it means that the increment each year is going to be lower than we had originally determined just in, in our educated guess before we engaged the financial consultants. So it is long. Yeah. It's, the, it's the maximum allowable. Um, and again, the developer is, is willing to proceed. Um, but given the change in, in what we anticipated, they feel that that's necessary. Okay, just to clarify a few things, the increment will be what annual? Um, as you look through the paper, it's it's not going to exceed seventy five hundred dollars a year. That page of that was okay. I'm sorry, Chris. No. I, I'm very sorry. Yeah, it it will. Um, you'll see it, it gradually increases with an estimated three percent appreciation of the property, uh, but that dollar amount does not, uh, at a present value, does not exceed $7,500 in any one year. Okay. So, again, we, we had initially thought that it might be upwards of approximately $10,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So. Again, and it's pay as you go. Pay as you so go. So there's nothing the city would have to put forward. We wouldn't have to bond. Right, pay. right. We don't have to do that. Right. And if the value, uh, market value increased substantially more than had been anticipated, what would happen? Um, well, as they would recoup their funds more quickly and when they reach the maximum amount, um, it would stop. The would district stop. would be shorter. So it's either 25 years or until they recoup the $171,000. It's either or. So is $171,000 is the total that they need to recoup? Plus interest. Okay. So it's principal that's, level. That's, that's, the oh, present, that includes that's the present value. value. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. Okay. So when they reach that, then the district stops or the district dies. Guys, mm -hmm. is yeah, nice. Happy death. Decertify it. Okay. Yes. Decertify. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get here. I know what you meant, but I'm sticking Okay. Okay. Well, you know, it, I really, really uh, 
do not like those long periods of time. And I don't like TIFF at all, but I'm really excited that he's, uh, they're doing this. And their plans look wonderful, and I think Washington Street is so ripe for something to happen. I've long believed that if Washington Street would begin to redevelop, it would kind of segue into other areas of town. And that's where the traffic is, is on Washington Street. So uh, even though it's uh, much longer than I have hoped to see, I'm going to support it because I, I, I want to see it happen. And I, I have faith that they also want to see it happen and that they're going to work diligently to make this be a good thing. So I don't know how you feel, Dave. But yeah, I feel like 26 years is about the useful life of a building. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's not, it's not optimal. It would have been nice coming at 15 years. Yeah. But really, with the ask coming down to 188, 171, 100, yeah, 171, just under that, I have no problems with it, I think. And we could recoup and decertify it younger if development continues along that Washington corridor and it's not just this one building right. and then everything else sits. If it could, you know, build some momentum on that corridor, it could. It could but right, right now, this district that we speak of is just that specific facility. Yes. Oh. Okay. So we're modifying the district and creating that tonight mm -hmm. is one of the resolutions. Well, it's, and it's also great to see the redevelopment in Brainerd. You know, I think we're, we're a little biased, but that's what we like to see. Sure. <laughs> right? I like it. <laughs> I like it, yeah. yeah. So what are your thoughts on that, Dave? Well, I uh, will do a... Uh, one motion here, you can do three upstairs again. All right. Make the motion to adopt the TIF plan and establish the TIF district. Adopt a resolution approving the contract for private development and adopt a resolution authorizing the interfund TIF loan for certain costs connected with the district. Right. And we, the city does um, get a, a certain amount for administration, is that not right? Correct. How much is We got $15,000 from the developer right now and then each year we can withhold up to 10% of the increment to pay for administration cost. Okay. And the resolution for the interfund TIF loan is again something that we might not have to use it, but if we need it, then we have it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it should be the beginning of a, a really good thing that we hope just continues. So uh, you have made the motion and I will second it. And all in favor? Aye. Opposed. Motion carry. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Sheila. And I uh, know a lot of work goes into this, but uh, thank you. Thank you. And the next thing, do we have anything more? Or don't tell me we're done. No, we just tore right through it, man. My <laughs> Lord.